So you're finally awake. You get out of bed, you shower, you make breakfast, you sit down with your cup of coffee and start creating your dream program or project. And you've always wanted to do this. So this should be natural, right? Now you get a few hours in and you start to hit a brick wall. Where's that one folder I needed? Where did I put that one asset? The day starts to drag on. That passion that you once had for this project slowly is being sapped away from you. Until finally, it's the evening. The day has ended and you feel like you haven't accomplished anything. But that's not totally true, is it? I mean, you did get to relax a little bit, right? So listening to other developers on YouTube, I see that we all have a little bit of this in common when it comes to game development. We feel like we're wasting time or we didn't accomplish as much as we wanted to in a day, week or month of programming our games. See, the truth is we all work at our own pace and we all bring something to the game development table and not to toot my own horn, but organizing projects is one of the things that I think I bring to that table. So in this devlog, I'm going to go over some of the ways that I would organize my game and also just generally how I've organized projects in the past. Now, the first thing I would do when starting a project is do a process called cleaning my plate. The idea behind cleaning your plate is to get all of the things that are off of your mind so you can focus on the projects that are most important, eliminating all distractions in the process. I actually do this fairly often in my personal as well as my professional life. Here's a small example. I'm a pretty meticulous person, so I like to keep a very clean list of videos I want to watch for fun in my watch later list on YouTube. Now this list is almost always hours long and I can never manage to watch all of these in my free time. Even if I did, I'm most certainly going to pick up more videos along the way that I'm interested in watching. Now instead of binging all of this or watching at a higher viewing speed, I'm gonna cut out all of the videos, mostly the ones that are longer in length and other ones that I'm just not interested in anymore. I like cooking, but it's not necessarily a core hobby of mine or a skill that I need to learn at this particular moment. Secondly, I'm going to be critical about the viewing experience instead of passively watching everything. If it's not entertaining, I will just click off the video and I'll go on to the next one. By clearing my plate, I can cut down on the amount of content I'm consuming each day, which frees up more time for me to work on creative projects that I'm actually passionate about. It's important to note that clearing your plate is a learned skill. I wasn't good at it at first, and honestly, to this day, I struggle with sometimes taking on too much. Learning to cut out that extra noise, though, is really important. The world is going to try to add to that noise, and the more intentionally you are about what you take on is going to just help you along in your game development process and also just in life. Now, goal setting is the next thing that I would like to tackle when it comes to starting a project. And there are many different ways to tackle this in your personal life as well as your professional life. And there are many different resources that I've picked up that have described this in many different ways. However, I find that it boils down to two important elements, clearly defining that goal and the time frame it'll take to complete that goal. These two elements give you the basic framework of getting stuff done, emphasis on the stuff. It's not to say that once you've defined these two things, you can just leave them as is and complete the goal, but it can give you a good start. With game development, there are a lot of different subtasks to complete. What may start off as create a game can certainly turn into many things. Creating a game turns into creating a game design document, which turns into coding tasks, which then can be broken up into subtasks of coding the game manager, coding the player behavior, and coding the enemy behavior. Art assets can be structured similarly to the coding tasks. Oh, and don't get me started on if you want to create a devlog series for this. You gotta create a script, record the video, edit the footage, mix the audio, create a thumbnail, publish the video. <gasps> And then you have to do all of the other things to create a minimal viable product for your audience to enjoy. Wow, that's a lot of things. <laughs> now it's important to give these tasks some sort of time frame to complete them, but you don't have to be super rigid or perfect 
about these timeframes. Just give it your best guess and adjust your expectations as reality sinks in. And add to these lists as you need. Trust me, there are gonna be things that you've missed and you've gotta add those to your list at some point. Now, once you've finished these things, I would take a sip of coffee and relax. After all, I think you've earned it at this point. <sighs> there was no coffee in there. That was just for show. Now, before beginning, I would also have a game design document and a file structure that I can lean back on. Generally speaking, these two items are gonna be the thing that holds your project together like glue. Game design documents are used to keep the core vision of your project from getting too watered down, and the file structure is to keep your assets and scripts from getting lost in the weeds. Actually, after thinking about that, that kind of reminds me of like Shrek's Swamp or something like that. See, if you don't have a good game design document, it's like the mucky water from the swamp, and then you've also got the weeds that are the assemblance of all your assets and scripts that were just piled all over the place. It always comes back to Shrek, I swear it does. Now a GDD doesn't have to be involved with every single project. The scope might be too small to warrant one, or you might be doing a solo project like a game jam. A file structure, on the other hand, is something that I think everybody should do, no matter what kind of project you're doing, if it's game development, if it's art assets, anything, you should always have one of these. And let me show you an example of what a file structure may look like. So I've got my desktop right here and we're just gonna start by creating a folder. It doesn't really matter what the name of this folder is, so we're just gonna call it Floof. Floofty, there we go. So Floofty is the name of our project here and we're gonna create some subfolders inside of this. Now, it doesn't have to be the exact same file structure as what I'm using here, but generally speaking, we can have different folders for different sub items. This is generally something that I would make for like a video. And as we add more assets, say I use like a particular editing software, for instance, uh, we would use like maybe Premiere Pro here. We can have our Premiere profiles listed in here, and I can just drop my timelines into here. Any edits that I may do will just fall into this folder. Um, as I collect footage for the video, I might put it in here, and then also audio would be placed in here. Now here's a little tip that I will say, if you do have files that you want in a particular order, I usually put a number before this. Now, depending on what operating system you're on, like say you're on Linux or you're on Macintosh, there might be a better way to organize this, but I find generally speaking, when I have named folders that have numbers before them, when I click the name option, I can organize this the way that I would prefer. And say for instance, I wanted to add another folder, I would add a folder here, and we can just call this scripts or maybe a better option might be documents or documentation, doesn't really matter. Now remember that your headings can't be too broad, but they also can't be too specific. So like for instance, video is nice because we know that all of our video will be in here. Audio is nice as well, um, but these might be too specific. You might just want to have a folder called assets. And then we can put our audio and our video in here, but now we have another subfolder. So these subfolders can get a little bit mucky, but just keep that in mind. And then also making sure that we update our tags here. I actually like having Premiere Pro. I like having my video editor be towards the top of my list. So I might put this as two. There we go. There's a basic structure for our potential project named Floofty. Now here's the hard truth. I'm not perfect. I'm constantly making mistakes. I've made mistakes in the past, but the thing is that we learned from those mistakes. We don't do things right the first time we try them, and that's totally fine. After all, we are humanly flawed. Staying organized keeps us from getting stuck in these ruts and forgetting what our purpose is, and that's kind of the goal of this video, is to keep progressing towards the end of our projects. After all, I wanna make games and I think you wanna make games as well too. 
So do whatever you need to to document your progress, because after all, I think that's what keeps us moving forward. For me, I'm going to keep uploading videos to this channel and I'm going to keep updating you on what I'm learning. In the next video, I would like to go over my ideas for what games I might create and coming up with some smaller projects that can help me accomplish that bigger vision. So stay tuned on what I create and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.